What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 138 of the Taste Cast, a weekly podcast where we talk about things, react to things, do a bunch of random shit. My name's Seth. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. A couple quick reminders to download and play Final Fantasy VII Remake, Remnant from the Ashes, Maquette, and Farpoint if you want to, uh, all offered for free on PlayStation Plus. Make sure to download those, play those, come back at the end of this month for Plus Club. We're going to let you know what we thought of those games. Let us know what you thought of them. And our game of the month randomly picked is Among Us, which is, of course, the very famous game of deception. You got to find the person who is the betrayer and fucking get rid of them before they get rid of you. Make sure to play that. And uh, come back at the end of the month for Game of the Month. We're going to discuss that. And Chris is going to get to pick his Game of the Month for next month. And he has assured me yesterday that he has a whole plan for this. He's got it all planned out. I have no idea what it is. Chevy might, but I don't think he does. He's not the type of guy who asks questions. We're going to find out. It's going to be a big (laughs) surprise. So stay tuned for Game of the Month. We have Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all the time. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us. We have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further than liking, commenting, and sharing this video, and subscribing if you're brand new. And type in hashtag AskTLG on your comment if you'd like to be considered on TasteCast. And then one last uh, quick reminder is I have a personal channel, which is Tasty Senpai, linked down below, where I do things that are not gaming related, even though it's almost impossible for me to not to talk about games at some point because it's a pretty big part of my life uh recently uh we have started making videos again on there we kind of took a break in 2020 as a lot of people did with a lot of things and uh yeah so we're trying to hop back in i say we because me and chevy filmed like five little mini episodes Mm -hmm. where we uh tried out all these like snacks from like south korea and china uh so if you're curious about that and you want more of us but less gaming for some reason uh you can go check that out and uh yeah link down below it's fun to do that. It's fun to do something different. And like they're real uh, small episodes. Yeah. Fucking bite sized. Old school YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty fun. Check it out. Um, yeah. So tasty cast typically mm-hmm. start with what we've been playing. I have played one game. So I will let Chris start. Oh, me. Okay. Um, well, I've been playing some Code Vein recently on stream. Uh, it's a. I, I it's I equate it to anime's Dark Soul, which is what a lot of people equate it to, and mm-hmm. it's it's really enjoyable. I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. It's it's definitely got very hard moments. Uh, recently, I <laughs> I switched from using like a big giant fuck off bastard sword thing to a much quicker uh, rifle with a bayonet on it, mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of ran past everything real quick because it was it was a lot to take in all at once. I was just running and screaming the whole time. <laughs> Next time I play a game like Dark Souls, if I get surrounded, I'm just going to be like, this is a lot, and I'm just going to run away from them. Excuse me, guys. This is too much for me right now. I'm going to leave. <laughs> See you later. So I'm going to go. Right to the next bonfire. I just made a run for it, and it worked. <laughs> it was great. I forgot what weapon I used in that. You used the 200 sword, I thought, the big one. Yeah. For a long time. I think I'm still using it. Yeah, it's so a like good the weapon. Gram or something like that, is what it's called? Something like that. I can't remember. I, yeah, it's been a while since we played. Mm. we got to beat that. We're pretty far into it. Yeah, he, I was watching him play, and he's just, like, complaining <laughs> the whole time. I'm just like, uh-huh. It, it only gets harder, man. Yep. <laughs> so, there's uh, the That's last funny. level I remember us doing was, like, a, essentially just a bunch of bridges everywhere. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it was essentially glorified <laughs> hallways everywhere. God. It was rough. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Fortunately, Seth doesn't get lost yeah. easy, so Mm-mm. it was it was good in that way. But to me, I was just like, "Holy crap!" Is just white hallways everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, it looks pretty samey, and then like a yeah. lot of it start intersecting and crossing over each other. And some parts are dead ends, and some parts are drop off points. And then you go around another part, and you got to go over here and over that. And it's just like all these different. It's like one of those old paintings with all the, like the paths mm-hmm. and shit, and the upside down staircases and shit. Oh, an Escher painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. So when you get there, <laughs> you, you don't have a lot of dodge room, and uh, everything looks the same. So have fun. That's when stuff like the bayonet is really good. Cause you just poke forward into people, <laughs> yeah. or if you're set to just run and do one heavy hit, and yep. you're so over leveled, you just murder everything. Yep. <laughs> also an option. Also an option. It's a good option. It's my favorite. <laughs> um, I've also been playing a little bit of Overwatch. Nothing crazy to report there. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire in my off time. Um, I actually beat it with the rogue character. 
ones now. So uh, mm-hmm. I got the other two main characters to be with, as well as the hidden character. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I really like the the way it plays out. Um, and you can get apparently you can get a lot of mods for it, but I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Again, it's just I've talked about it before. It's like it looks like a flash game. It's a you know uh, rogue like with cards. It's a really fun system. If you like that game, you should check out, and this is for anybody who likes Slay the Spire, you probably already have played these games, though. Check out uh, Monster Train, which is a really cool one as well. Chevy uh, put that one out there for me. I had no idea about it, and the name's so fucking generic. You're like, play Monster Train. I'm like, what is that? Like some yeah. shitty fucking mobile game? Like, <laughs> um, And then also check out uh, Griftlands, mm. which is... Uh, played that, too. You played it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's kind of neat because it's uh it's like an RPG in the sense of like you take missions and side quests and click on the map and it takes you to locations and then you have dialogue trees where you get to decide what you say to people and you can go into uh, like diplomacy or combat. But then all combat and uh, arguments uh, are the card game. It's similar to Slay the, Sp- Slay the Spire. And then if you die, I think it like resets you back to like a checkpoint in the story, something like that. I don't remember how it works. I haven't played in a while. And it's made by yeah, they make um oh, shoot a couple games. Yeah, you you know the art style as soon as you see it. Yeah, it's definitely that. <laughs> Is it the people who make Oxygen Not Included and Don't Starve? Chevy doesn't know. We'll continue the conversation so that's just quiet in here. So, <laughs> what uh, what else you playing, or you got anything else to say on Slay Spar? Uh, it's it's on Game Pass, but so is uh Monster Train. I was looking at that too. So, yeah, definitely check it out. You'll like it if you like Slay the Spire. I've also been playing uh some Final Fantasy fourteen. I got Black Mage to eighty, so I have all of the caster DPS at max now. Um, there's some moogle tombstone event that's happening right now to get some mounts and pets and things like that which i really need to dive further into um i just haven't really been motivated to do it much by myself um and then i've been playing uh, a lot of loop hero as well when i get the chance to play it what is it which is a really fun a lot loop hero oh, I've never heard it's of it. that's it's a, a roguelike but it's like old old like Apple computer style yeah. gameplay, like graphics wise. Um, and mm. you just have like your randomly generated circle that your character walks across and you add tiles of like, you know, mountains and, and enemy spawns and things like that. And you kind of generate your own battlefield to kind of loop through endlessly. Um, it's, it sounds weird, but it's a really fun, simple game. I just kind of play it in the background. Uh, you get gear as you kill things, just like different classes and stuff. Is it, really this fun. is, this is on me, but cause I have a beanie on, I have a beard in my ears and my, and my hairs on my ears. Are you saying loot loop or Luke loop? Like a loop. Circle. Okay. L-L-O-P. Gotcha. I think I know what game you're talking about now. <laughs> for some, yeah. like the first time you said, I was like, I think you said Luke or loot. I haven't heard of that. I was like, they saying loop. Maybe it's loop. And no, that's me. That's me. That's not your fault. <laughs> okay. So loop hero, um, for yeah. me now I know, um, it's interesting. Would you recommend it? Because uh, I was, I think I, I was looking at that on Steam. I would recommend it. It's it's pretty cheap. I think it's only like 16, 17 bucks on oh, Steam. Um, I've seen like three or four people playing it lately. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's re- it sounds really simple, but it gets really complicated because all the weapons have different stats, and you try to gear your characters specifically for their classes to different stats, and that you can level up. And there's bosses to fight. It's really fun. It's it's a lot of fun. It's it's really in depth hmm. for how simple the graphics are. Yeah, that one gets recommended to me, and I look at it, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to play that. And even when you were describing it first, it's like, eh, it's not really my style of thing. <laughs> but like, I see like how Did many you people. Say Apple. Yeah, I, and then I see how many people are like liking it and the positive reviews, and that you're saying you play it and you like it. And I'm like, that's one of those games I should probably just fucking play. Yeah, because like it's not selling it itself to me but mm-hmm. everyone likes it so like i feel like i should at least try it out because i like i like most games so hm. yeah i think most people will enjoy it it's not complicated in like gameplay it's just building your character properly to survive loops is where it gets complicated yeah interesting it's fun though and then uh i can't talk about it too much but i played remnant from the ashes with everybody so Everybody, everybody was there. But everybody, I played in the entire world. Like 
everybody all in one server. We God, crashed that's a it. Game really over. impressive Broke server. It. I I've only done that once in a game ever, and that was Phasmophobia when it first started getting hacked. They got like I think a hundred people in a server, and Poor that house. that I felt bad for the ghost. <laughs> Literally, like we were in the in the truck for like twenty minutes while people were loading in, and everyone was just jumping up and down, screaming, and like there's voice chat games. So it was just like sound like a party was happening. And as soon as that door opened, there's just a crowd of people slowly just like walking up the house and people open the door and just walk upstairs and going into the basement and everybody's just yelling. And I was like, is there a ghost actually in this house right now? There's there, going to be. There's a hundred. Yeah. There's a hundred <laughs> fucking people in this house just screaming and shit. And I was walking around like, this is so stupid. <laughs> like, this isn't a fucking, this is an investigation. This is the house party that happens to be at a fucking haunted house. Somebody's going to see the ghost. One of you are an investigator. I just want to see the ghost take someone out. You wouldn't even notice it. <laughs> anyway, that's the only time I ever played with everybody. Like that, <laughs> that was everybody. Like everyone was there. I feel like anybody watching this is probably there. <laughs> Josh was there. I lost him. I ended up leaving without him, and then he left. Like it felt like it felt like when I used to go to parties all the time. Sounds like, like a was, party. Yeah. <laughs> like that wasn't a, that wasn't a ghost game anymore. <laughs> House party simulator. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, unless you have more to say, I'll go next. Nope, that's it. Okay, so I played one game in the last week, and that is Remnant from the Ashes. Now, I can't talk about that because we're going to talk about that on Plus Club. I have talked about it on the show before because I've, I've played it before this month. But I uh, just kind of want to give you guys maybe an update on what, what I've been doing in the game, which involves you guys as well. So I'm going to try and talk about this without revealing any opinions on it. Uh I've played on PS4, so I'll have something to talk about for sure. But I ha- I've owned it on PC, so I've been playing it quite a bit on PC. Uh, me and Josh have been playing it. We've been going through. Uh, we both picked up the DLCs, and we beat those DLCs, um, or at least one of the DLCs, which adds a pretty substantial chunk of content. And then now we're going through the campaign again, and then I hopped over with you guys. So me, you, and Chris, uh, everybody played together. Um we kind of went through you guys were learning the ropes we beat the earth uh zone uh, we're moving on to the second zone which is like the desert if you what's called zone um for anybody playing you guys will know what i'm talking about if you're that far um we did not run into like two or three of the things i wanted to run into because they have really good items um so we should definitely go back and try and find that stuff we did find the monkey key which monkey. allowed us the get to get the assault rifle which uh, I don't have on my other save. So that was kind of cool to run into something I, I don't have. Um, but there's a couple of things I, I would like to get with you guys. Um, and yeah, we made it to the next zone. So we beat the first area. We fought the dragon. I think it was the first time we actually died all together. There was a couple bosses before that, you know, somebody would drop, somebody would drop. But we made it through each, each time, first try. Um, but yeah, the dragon um, dropped us on our first attempt. Yeah, sadly, I don't think it was a dragon that killed me. I think it was. It, it was just a lot of bad things happening. It was yeah. not the challenge. I fought that thing so many mm-hmm. times that, like, I, I know that fight. But, like, yeah, I had some bullshit happen. Um, I got. Why is my camera just focusing? It's a ghost in the background. Um, <laughs> Everybody. It's Everyone's here. Camera doesn't know who to focus on. Um, yeah, I, like rolled into fire got lit on fire and then i was rolling 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 trying to get it out and i had like four guys chasing after me and then i rolled backwards into more fire and i was like well i'm dead and i just like died so the dragon didn't do anything to me i just rolled through fire like an asshole i don't know what happened to you and chris i think was up close and i think you went out pretty quick you were like doing finals and you're dead because i don't remember the build up to that fire yeah i was say i'm sure the melee life makes dodging kind of hard so Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. You gotta you gotta do uh, those time dodges where you're not rolling, but that's tricky too. Uh, for me, it was one of the the ads showed up, and it was one of the ones that did like explosions, mm. and it pushed me into the dragon fire, <laughs> and yeah, I died. Yeah, so I was like, well, that was stupid. Awesome. <laughs> you also ran off of a uh, forming platform. Oh yeah. I- been playing too much minecraft over the last few months i was like why go around i'll just jump down no <laughs> didn't work out <laughs> didn't work at all so i just died instantly um 
But yeah, so look forward to Plus Club. We'll be talking about that game there in more detail and our actual opinions. Mm. But just to let you guys know, I, f- I feel like all three of us have played it a pretty good chunk. We actually sat there and we beat a whole zone. So that was cool. You guys got a good idea of uh, how some of the stuff works. I would like to re-roll a campaign or something to kind of show you that things can change. Um, and I've definitely played it enough. I think I've put, not on PS4, but the game in general this month, I've probably put like 25, 30 hours into it. So I've definitely played it quite a bit and I will be able to talk about it at length. Um, but that's what I've been playing. Nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, also been playing Remnant, which we just talked about, and I shared the thing I did. So he did something. Yeah, I uh, look forward to that conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Other than that, I played some 14. I didn't play a lot this last week. I was just kind of too tired, I guess. Um, I feel like you haven't been playing a whole lot lately. Mm-mm. Just been kind of chilling. Every time I look in your room, you're just like dead. <laughs> I think I need to take some time off. Probably. Um. Yeah, so I in fourteen is pretty normal stuff. I you know we've been raiding. Um, the Mughal Tombstone event came back. Like uh, Chris said, I did. Uh, Are they dead? Huh? Mughal Tombstone. It's a currency. Tomes. Tombstone. Oh, I was like, I don't want dead Mughals. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, they. It's a currency. Um, and then you buy items from a Mughal. So, um, and they're like usually. That older items that you can still get in game but you know the the grind is almost pointless and they just make it easier for you to get so hmm. um, they kind of do it in lulls to try to entice people to come back for a little bit and we're in a lull right now so um Whew. so i did get enough to get uh one minion it's a little baby seal called uh, salt and pepper I believe it's called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's very cute. I haven't seen it, but I believe it. <laughs> um, I still want to get... There's a little like Iron Dwarf, I think it's called, minion. There is one of the dog mounts I don't have uh, that's in there. And I think there's a couple songs I'm missing from my orchestrian role that I want to get out of there. So it's going to cost me a few runs, but that's okay. So and That's pretty much it uh i've been leveling my astrologian uh i think i'm 72 73 now so i'm getting close to 80 cool yeah that was real fucking short and sweet yep chris had the most to say about games that's that's an interesting one well it's funny because even like this week there was a couple nights where i was like oh yeah you know i'll play something and i was like and uh we had the opportunity to do the 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 videos on the other channels like oh yeah no we'll do it we've been putting yeah we were long. we were kind of planning on doing like uh we, we recently did a reaction to yeah. the uh dnd dark alliance yep. uh reveal so make sure to go check that video out we were planning on just filming that and then us you were like oh let's do the snack thing and i was like we, we can do that and then yeah we spent like more time on that than i thought we would but we filmed yeah. like a bunch of little eight to ten minute episodes so yeah that whole night was just filming pretty much yeah and it seems like every night like in the last week i I had something going on it seemed like so yeah i just didn't really have the time and then the one night i did have time i was just kind of falling asleep on my computer so (laughs) it's a good way to spend spend time at the computer yeah um yeah anything else that's it anything else guys excited for monster hunter rise coming out soon (sighs) yeah probably (laughs) i i am i'm very excited i uh i i have a hard time like until like I'm playing it, then I'm like, oh, okay, cool, this is yeah. awesome. So that was kind of me because I played so much and not so much compared to a lot of people, but like for me, plenty of time uh, put into Monster and World that mm. was like taking a break or whatever. And then like this coming, out, I'm like, oh man, it's a whole new Monster Hunter. And then I played the <laughs> demo. I was like, oh fuck, I love Monster Hunter. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Also, congratulations to somebody in our community who purchased the Switch recently. Hopefully, we'll get the chance to play. Yeah, very excited for that. Not even just that game. Uh, there's tons of games on there that we should try out. So Nope, yeah. just that cool. game. And Monster Nintendo's really good about... That's the only thing that, that console's made for is that. I think Nintendo's really good about having multiplayer that's more than four-player, too. So. I've never played Splatoon. Me either. I don't know if I ever will. I'm just putting that out there. What's that face? That's that's Chris's I love Splatoon face. It hurts it's him. supposed to be fun. How about Mario Kart? You want to do some Mario Kart? I do until I get fucking bombed to hell, and then I'm pissed. 
I watched someone play that recently, and they were doing things that I didn't realize you can do in Mario Kart. I was like, okay, that's way beyond like playing Mario Kart. Well, I'm, you I'm know how to manipulate now. the game. They just knew like when to slide like off the course to like to still keep their speed up, and when to like jump over parts of the track and stuff like that. And I was just like, okay, no, you're not playing to like play Mario Kart anymore. You're just like breaking the game. That, that's all you're yeah. doing. <laughs> I was pretty good at that game last time. We all played it. Um, but it's because I was just like sliding constantly. And, and there's a couple of people there, admittedly, who didn't have the slide down yet. But I was just like constantly just going. And I was like. It makes a huge difference. I can only imagine. The only reason I'm bringing that up is I can only imagine if you like played that game a lot, which I, I haven't. Um, you would just get down where you need to be when sliding at every single like it would just become muscle memory every fucking race because it started becoming like that for me well and then even like how to defend against like the items and stuff like that like it, it's a weird like strategy game instead of a racing game. yeah it's still got some of that nintendo everyone can have fun you don't have to be the best we'll give you an item to change shit up yeah sure there's expert level people like people in smash but that's what yeah that's what i'm referring to people who aren't playing it anymore they're just it's like <laughs> Mario Party as well. Like you're like, I'm doing amazing. I got a strategy, and it's like, no, you don't. No, that that game don't care. This this <laughs> this game does not care about that. And then you play a mini game, and you're like, I'm doing great at mini games. Like, does it matter? You you landed here, and now fuck you. <laughs> and I'm like, well, goddamn, is this this just like real life? Um, sometimes good, sometimes not. I would like to to get a bunch of people together playing clubhouse uh, games though. Let's do it. I'll stream it. We'll just play poker. That'd be so boring. Ugh. I hate poker. Uh, I don't think you have to buy it since I own it. So I hate card games. Except for... I mean, I like them, but I... Yeah. Except for, like, Grifflands and Monster Train and Slay the Spire, but that's not, that's not a card game. The same way as poker. All right. Let us know in the comments uh, what <laughs> games have you guys been playing? Uh, what have you really been digging? Any games you played recently that you regret for the rest of your life um and uh, what games did you suggest us play um let's know everything you're thinking about in the comments below uh so it's convenient that we uh got through that in 20 minutes because typically we're talking what we've been playing for like 40 something minutes because we got to spend 40 minutes watching and then talking about the square enix presents spring 2021 which is square enix's uh event that happened less than 24 hours ago in which they show off a bunch of stuff that's coming out uh, soon, I guess, next year or so, some of their offerings. And uh, I'm being kind of vague here because I actually don't know a whole lot on what they showed outside of oh, I know two things. one thing that was all over Twitter that I am i don't know how I'm going to react to, honestly. Um, and uh, I believe they're, they're going to show some Outriders, so, um, which I'm already sold on. So... Uh, we're going to watch this, react to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because it's Square Enix. We typically don't get like a 44-minute video from Square Enix. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's something they keep doing. But I don't think they can because Square Enix projects typically, they're not Ubisoft. They don't pop out games left and right. No, they don't. So I feel like maybe they just have so many things in the works right now, they can do this video. Um, so before we watch it, uh, is there anything you're hoping to see from this and something maybe you're not hoping to see from it? Uh, without going into it too much, just because you didn't mention it, um, there was a copyright they made that a lot of people speculated was going to be the 14 expansion and wasn't. They, that, that'll be here. So I'm curious to see what that is going to end up actually being. Um, and then um, I would like to see more on uh, that tactical RPG that they're developing. Oh, yeah. Um, I have the demo. I still haven't played it yet. And then, oh, yeah, there's a demo. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe they'll show off the. I already saw it on their YouTube, but maybe they'll show the uh, theme song trailer for N Walker. So, because I always take an excuse to listen to Sokin's music. So. True. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> um,. When it comes to Square Enix, I mean, anything Final Fantasy, I'm going to be curious about. Oh, 16 would be awesome. Uh, so that I would, would have been I, everywhere. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's <laughs> yeah. shown because the only thing I saw, the the big thing people were talking about is, in my opinion, 
not a big deal. So I was like, okay, that's the big thing. Huh? But um, but we'll watch it. Obviously, we're going to find out. Um, hopefully, there's something revealed. I'd like to see more on that uh, vague project they showed a little bit of where the person was jumping from those little islands or whatever. It looked like a next-gen game. Project oh, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'd like to see more on that. Um, I'd like to see Final Fantasy 16, but I don't think we're seeing that because that would have been big. Um, yeah. I would love to see uh, a front mission game be announced, but that's not going to happen. I feel like that would have been a pretty big announcement. That, yeah, that, that's just not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen, but if we're talking about what I want to see. I would love to see them go front mission. New front mission's coming out. It's a tactical RPG. I'd be like, holy shit, thank you, finally. Um, and then right after that, I went from software to come out and be like, hey, you like front mission? Guess what? Armored Core's coming out. I'd be like, holy <laughs> fuck. What is happening? The world's getting better all of a sudden. Um, it would be it would be such a good time. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, I don't really follow. I want Quiet Man too. Do you get out? Yes, <laughs> I do. One hundred percent. I one hundred percent want it. Out. I haven't even played the first one, but I will play the first one if they fucking say there's a second one coming out because I have to know what happens before I play the second one. It's very important. I want to see what's inside the the sack. Before he kills those guys in that alleyway. They look at him like, what are you looking at? And he's just like, I can't hear. And he puts the bag down and kills him. I was like, this is a serial killer. I don't play that game. <laughs> um, I'm also curious because they uh, they technically uh, own Eidos, if we'll see any Tomb Raider related stuff. Oh, I guarantee. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure we will. There, I saw a video of somebody recreating Tomb Raider 2, the original, uh, in Unreal. And they actually like made it look like the older game. Like, I always think it's wild when people do that. It's like like with Zelda and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, it's it's really neat looking. And a bunch of people are like, a bunch of people are like, fucking Crystal Dynamics doesn't have the balls to do this. And I'm like, I like how your first your first thought is to challenge them to make this. I would say all that's gonna happen is the lawyers, not even the developers. The lawyers are gonna go be like, mm, protecting RIP. You can't do that. Yeah, I saw them making it, and I'm like, it looks pretty legit. Like, it doesn't look AAA, but it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, is this legal? Because <laughs> it's like they're recreating the whole thing. Nope, it's not. And I always really appreciate when people do that, but anytime I hear that, anytime I hear a story about a bunch of people are recreating yeah, this game, I'm at like, that point, rest in peace. get that fucking game made. Don't reveal that game until it's done. Yeah, and put it on the internet before. Don't, don't be like, we're working yeah. on it, because then they'll be like, well, we're working on a case against you right now. So Yeah, they'll get a letter in the mail real quick. Yeah, especially if it's a Nintendo property. Nintendo will fucking destroy you. They have. Like, <laughs> hey, we're all family-friendly fun times. Wait, you doing something? We're not. You can get our permission to do that. We're going to fucking kill you. I say that was um, a really neat, like, <laughs> Pokemon, like, fan-made Pokemon game being made there for a while, and all of a sudden they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, we have to stop. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'd, I'd like a fan-made Pokemon game to be shown uh, on the Square Enix event. Yeah, and, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm, Chris? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really have much expectations, to be honest, uh, just because I try to stay out of speculating too hard for the most part. I try. As I always succeed. I try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're I talking can't about do. like dream speculations of what I would love to see, but I know it's probably never going to happen. The realm of possibilities. A Final Fantasy Tactics remake would be fan fucking fantastic. Fuck, not even a remake, just re-release it. Let me buy it somewhere. That'd be cool. But but like a like a re not a reboot, but like a um, fuck. What's it called? I'm I'm getting the the terms mixed up. Remaster and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> No, I'm drawing a blank. Oh my god! I want them to recreate. Not a re you don't want to remake. You want to remaster. Yeah. No, it would. It would be a remake. You want to remake then? Yeah, from oh, the ground okay. up. It'd be cool to okay, rebuild it from the ground up yeah. as a tactical game, but yeah. just with like new graphics stuff like that. I would love that. A remaster oh, would be cool so as well. Good. But even a re-release, like Chris said, like give us the option to get it. That'd be nice. Other than on mobile phone, it's like, like yeah, I want to play it on phone, which is so stupid. Even though that game's complicated. Crystal crazy. Defender, not Crystal Defenders. What was that? Crystal something that we played together. It's on phone and console. Oh, uh, Chronicles. Crystal Chronicles. That played better on phone than it did on console. Way better. On so I, I don't know. Maybe hmm. they're hiding that that Final Fantasy Tactics wouldn't run well on console for some weird reason. 
It's a licensing problem because they don't completely own it. Yep. Yeah. Who owns it? The, the the director of the game has like a, a portion of the ownership of it. And he won't allow it? Mm, he's kind of protective of it. That's weird. I don't know why. He works. He He's the one who did the Ivalice raids in 14, right? Yeah, but he doesn't work for Square. But he held, he's not. It's uh, yeah, I'm with you, Chris. I'm not. I'm not on Chevy's side on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking a side. I'm Chevy's just explaining sitting, how it Chevy's is. sitting here going like, you don't need Final Fantasy Tactics. It ain't for you. Oh, dude, I need Tactics too. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, that one's a tricky one. There's like three tactics games. You could just release them all as a bundle, like an anniversary That'd be sick. edition. Yeah. The I don't think the Game Boy ones have any issues. They're just not going to do it because they're not yeah, the same. Just have it called Final it. Fantasy Tactics Collection, or just make a new one. Yeah. And that. Yeah. Do everything that we're saying. Square Enix. Do it all. People don't. Big companies don't like making tactical games because it's too much of a gamble. Sucks. Go to an Sucks. indie developer. Yeah. Publish it. Square does publish. Do it. And you publish some crap. So publish some good. Have the people who made War- <laughs> make make the people who fucking made uh, Wargroove do it. I'm sure they would. Yeah, or that Fate Tactics that just came out. That game's cool too. Yeah. Anything else, Chris? No. 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 Uh, Dirge of Cerberus. It's coming. I've only played the game once, and I don't have a lot of memories of it, so mm. you'll get through. I hear a lot of people hate it, but I don't have any bad memories of it. I don't have any great memories of it. It just kind of sits there. Chocobo Racing. Never Always. played it. The game Chevy did not existed because I remembered it for some Chocobo reason. Mystery Dungeon. That one too. Although there are some pretty new ones of that. Mm. The one on Switch is really fun, even though it's very simplistic. But I liked it. It's kind of oddly fun co-op. It's very minimal. You can barely help in co-op. But me and Josh played, and we got into a rhythm, and we started kind of enjoying it. And I was like, this shouldn't be. like I, I would prefer <laughs> if you could just like play a whole other character, but he had to like play one of my characters, mm-hmm. and it's kind of weird. But we started like, strategizing in combat and stuff, and it's pretty fun. Um, unless you guys have anything else to say when we start watching this video. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get it ready. Uh, you all good, Chris? All right, three, two, one, go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This planet was supposed to be a fresh start. Instead, we live in fear. The anomaly looks like a game with a demo. Underground, Mm. running from a planet that considers. Might be a demo I've played multiple times, or would play multiple times. Mm -hmm. Looks like a game that would probably be on Game Pass. Maybe. We jam out. This place is a fucking mess. Yeah, it is. That guy's reflex are pretty decent, though. He's yeah. in the middle of combat, and he's like, went instantly, I'm gonna kill this bird. <laughs> Unless they're so common, he's just like, oh, fuck one of these again. It's just battle hardened. That warrior instinct. Respect. In. Respect. Mankind might be on the back foot, but we, we push forward. We don't hide. We don't run. There you go. We are outriders. I'm less afraid of those than that flying thing. <laughs> flying thing can pick you up and throw you like it did with that flamethrower guy. Mm. I like that little, hey, look at all these things. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We have a lot in store for you today. Updates on some of our most anticipated titles, new game announcements, oh, and the world premiere of a new entry in one of our award-winning franchises. It's like I'm watching old Pepsi Be sure commercial. you stay tuned until the very end to get all of today's updates. This is Square Enix Presents. Now let's pick up with more on Outriders. The presentation's kind of decent. Mm. Put some work into it. Yeah. 
Not gonna lie, I'm pretty pretty hyped to play this. I don't know if I'm gonna be super stoked after I'm playing it, but I wanna play it more. I should play it Such a 180. Like it's funny. I know. I'm not playing. That wasn't my character. <laughs> A little spinning move I didn't have. Little pirouette, yeah. Mm -hmm. Little, I saw the earth spiky. I want to pale enemies on the earth spikes. Outriders, a co-op RPG shooter set in a dark original sci-fi universe, created by people can fly. Previously part of the Epic Games Group, the studio is renowned for developing world-class shooters like Bullet Storm and the Gears of War series. This can't be happening! You people are insane! All of this is fucking insane! Oh well, yeah it is! Humankind is bleeding out in the is trenches that a quote from a movie? Enoch. I don't know. This beautiful planet that sounds really familiar. By a mysterious anomaly. You played the demo. Hyper evolving. <laughs> no, but it sounds like he's just the game. <laughs> virus that is humanity. In other words, you. Spoiler alert. You now, die in the game and it ends. Enoch is hell off Earth. Leading the colonization advance party. Made me think of Silent Hill. The Outriders are the devastated by an early storm. While most of the unit is wiped out, you not only survive, but are left altered. Something more than human. <gasps> I actually liked not knowing it because as soon as our plans are getting kind of hooked to the story, like this is interesting. And then when the thing happens, I was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. I was like, "Let me explain it to you." I'm gonna tell the story worse for you. The tables have most definitely turned. With the anomaly flowing through their veins, outriders have split off into four classes. There's some real subliminal messaging here with outriders popping up a lot. Skill tree. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> buy outriders, outriders out April 1st, buy outriders. If you prefer a devious hit and run approach, the trickster's manipulation of time and space will be to your taste. Oh yeah. Deadly up close, the trickster will annihilate enemies with spectacular powers. Such as the temporal slice. <laughs> or, if death from a distance is more your thing, the Technomancer combines the anomaly's powers with technology. Place deadly turrets or release climate altering area effect weapons to take down your foe. The Devastator class is a tank in human yeah, yeah, yeah. form, give me, give me, give me. a biological sledgehammer. Difficult to kill and dangerous to be near. Isn't that who you're playing in Remnant? Gravity allows for brutal yeah. attacks, such as the <laughs> availability or gravity jump. I'm just gonna make the Devastator. Like I, There's the he used to play laser. support classes in game. Now he's like, like to take me tank, me tank, me smash, me smash. You may be easy to kill at close range, but you can leech energy from crowds of enemies or detonate thermal bombs to tear their flesh apart. Regardless of your choice, Confidence is everything. It's weird to me that there's just a fire class. Each class has its own like, I'm not complaining, it's cool, but if you're gonna have like one elemental dude, that reinforce seems weird to me. Style. But everyone likes so fire. Cover. It's Throw true, at least they're just kind of like cutting through the bullshit and being like, you guys are all gonna pick fire as a class anyway, so here's the fire class. <laughs> so there's the people who like electricity too. They fight to discover yeah. the source of a mysterious signal. Seems like snow, snow frost, ice, ice type pizza, power is always like not as popular. I like them as strategic element, like in a game where I can actually slow or freeze enemies. I get conflicted on it because a lot of times it mixes with water and I don't really like water, but yeah. I do like ice stuff. Yeah. You may be pulled into a search and rescue mission, drawn in to investigate a menacing cult. Yeah, anytime I can just be like a frost style or caster or whatever. Yeah, I like that. Each quest allows you to scavenge for new gear and weapons, to wear or trade with the duplicitous street vendors of humanity's new settlements, or NPCs in your own convoy. 
And then, of course, there's armor and weapon mods, which allow you to feel like this this video is for people who didn't play the demo. It's 100 percent just an because you played. Well, it's all advertising. It's literally going everything you learned in the demo. So it's like if we didn't get you in the demo, here, let me tell you what the game is. Which is smart because this game is gonna get overlooked by people like me if I hadn't played it. Those crazy looking pieces of gear they got on though. Yeah. It's With okay. a level threshold I like to that they're part, embracing for the hardiest of Game Wild. Yeah. Well, one thing I always like, get kind of like bored of in a lot of uh, considered a suicide mission specifically like shooter like loot games is like everything's trying to look like realistic. So, realistic and tactical. Yeah. Which I like but yeah, every game does it. Yeah. And they don't go too far out from it. Paint jobs and uh, oh yeah, the skulls of fallen enemies. Yeah, definitely interesting. Definitely the crazy they can't be looking armors, off. especially if they're just gonna go for like go for it, but like go full. I think it's interesting. You get to decorate your vehicle. Yeah. Your yeah. Can get the eyeballs they deserve. Little Mad Maxi. This is all just the tip of the iceberg. As the Outriders travel further beyond humanity's reaches, the strange, horrific truths of Enoch begin to reveal themselves. Sweet. April Fools. Too many mm. fucking games coming out already. Mm hmm. Lara Croft, the iconic female action hero. Oh, never heard of her. Video game scene 25 Who years ago. With guns blazing and pickaxe in hand, she continues to inspire new like generations the today. Did to this. this year marks the yeah. 25th anniversary of Tomb Raider, doesn't... and we are so excited to celebrate alongside fans throughout presentation 2021. Type stuff, so. Over the years, Lara has uncovered lost tombs, solved well, ingenious puzzles, Fantasy survived 14, treacherous traps, and saved well, yeah. the world many times over. But they always kind of slip she into other people's events. Like, here's Final Fantasy 16. I was going to say, yeah, they, they usually the just give people trailers. Side, yeah. And yeah. Fortune is fine. Different. It's a money maker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have some exciting well, there's a, there's a, there's a community Lara's yeah. for it, so Including it needs to have something for that. Anime series in collaboration with Netflix and Legendary Television. Anime. And talent updates for the next big screen installment that. of Tomb Raider featuring Alicia Vikander. Lara's also a movie all too over now? the gaming what? space. And oh, yeah. we're working with talented Came out teams a, on oh, crossovers ago, for Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint and War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Oh. What is the Lost Tactical Valley game. statue is also progressing extremely well, and we can't wait to share the final paint with you in the coming months. And we're thrilled to announce that a Tomb Raider cookbook is coming later this year from Insight Editions, <laughs> which will allow fans to bring recipes <laughs> okay. so that is real. adventures back home. Ooh. We're also announcing today a new digital bundle that will give us announcing to play all sorts of shit. Have merch. Game. You know what Tomb Raider is and yeah. Lara Croft? We got a bunch of stuff you can buy. Lara's origin from a survivor to the modern day Tomb Raider. We've only just kicked off Lara's tour. It's kind of makes sense. They're celebrating so right now. The cookbook for more nostalgic content, makes sense. fan celebrations, and exciting I mean, it's unique. Wolf Give us Iberian Wolf. If I don't cook survive, it. go in the woods. None of us will. Almost die. Collect animal. Put over fire. Yep. I've come so far. I'm not turning back. Why isn't it showing her getting murdered Get for 30 ready. seconds at a time? What YouTube you might do? not like that. It's true. They don't like anything lately. YouTube does and not like way anything way lately. That is 100% accurate. You've that Lara Croft has now arrived in Fortnite. They like money. But that's not the end of our epic uh, Fortnite. collaboration. So Croft much Manor Fortnite is coming to Fortnite Creative as a oh, playable yeah. adventure on March 23rd. Fortnite's dead, Alliance dude. Studios it's dying. Hard at work on the hub, and we can't wait for you to play it next week. So when I say, be sure to see check people out Fortnite say that about like, not nah, even the remotely the same scale, but like when they say that about Fall Guys, and then like I watch people go. Like, you playing it, and they're gaming. still queuing in a match. People, people like seeing things fail. Yeah, it's fun for them, which sucks. Looks like Rico. Are they having multiplayer? Are they? <laughs> what is that? What the fuck's going on there? Maybe it's an iteration where you can make your own character and you don't play as Rico. 
Maybe it's a mobile game. <laughs> I'm not gonna get <laughs> stoked until I see gameplay. That's right. Battle Royal on cell phone. That guy got <laughs> murdered by a group of people. That's scary. <laughs> Wouldn't even know if he was a bad guy or not. He looked up. It is bold. I fucking knew it. Well, oh the CG act like shit. <laughs> but Hitman Mobile 2? They already had the Hitman, Hitman Go or mobile game. Greetings, 426. Yep. Yep. This is a unique opportunity. You've large shoes to fill. To succeed, you will need to work together and strike from the Oh yeah, me too. I love mobile so much. Thank you, Square Enix. I can't wait to play these games. And only play Final Fantasy Tactics on mobile. Thank you for that as well. That's that's where I'm at home. Is on my phone. Or on your PSP that you can't get. I can get one. I'll go to eBay. Time when you go to the merch store, they sell Space Invaders t-shirts. I saw what this was over I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if they own it. Apparently, it's something they're showing. When did they get the rights to that? I don't know. That's a, that's a weird one. Maybe this kind of snatched it up at one point. So I was like, I'm yeah, hungry, I need game. I need money. And they're like, I give you five bucks. Like, deal. I think somebody who owned Space Invaders was just sitting there and Square Enix was like, What are you doing with that? I'm like, oh, Your eyes weren't playing we'll take it. Just have it. Square Enix yeah. Montreal and Taito are collaborating on a new vision for the Space Invaders brand. Oh, Taito. With an upcoming mobile game built on innovative Maybe AR technology. And now let's take a look at a few more delightful games from Taito. <laughs> Oh, yes, my favorite song. God, what is happening? Banger. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's my favorite part. It's the chorus. Oh, I know that game. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> it's on I'm Switch. Why is that? Played one in a group. Blown up all that sea life. What are you doing, you monster? Look at that resolution. That's like perfect for our monitors. <laughs> perfect. Oh, neat. Cool. I feel like they just pop out ones like that all the time. Bubble bottle. Oh my god, I love this song. Getting a copyright strike for the song. <laughs> this whole video they is just gonna be like, where's the money they at? They did get a warning to mute this, the stream at 13 minutes. There's a warning? Yeah, they, there was like a, a warning ahead of time for everybody who's live streaming to mute it at like 13 minutes. Oh, we're past that. I'm fucked. Yeah. Let's shift our attention YouTube will let me to know. Avengers. They Come always do. Fortunately, Square is really Earth's good about like, just being like, eh, Xbox Series X you and can have, and have it, just give us some roster is growing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care about that. Just when they're like, this video can't exist unless you take this out. That's like, Capcom. <laughs> that only happened like once, but it's so annoying. Or you finally kind of arrived. Bruce? It's only the maestro. Not the fuck. Did I the desolation that surrounds you, Barton. I will save you from it all.
Brute Destruction. I care. Never had hype for that game, and it sucks to see how many people are disappointed with it. Check out yeah. this extended gameplay from Operation Hawkeye Future Imperfect. Is that hey, Hawkeye? Hawkeye? I guess Hawkeye. he has arrows. I wasn't even paying attention. You. How's my dog doing? Look, he's he's great. Blonde, I love dude. that dog. Uh, <laughs> what, what, did, did you move out today? What? No. What makes you say that? They said they were movers. I don't know. Linton Francis Barton. What great timing. Do I know you? Watch dogs. <sighs> Do I guns. know you? Surrender quietly. Oh my god, what are you guys doing? This isn't a vibe. You thinking what I'm thinking? This goon squad is going down. Goon hey, squad. Move to play. <laughs> Bad guys are here. Let's make some smart ass commentary console. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feel good in the morning? We've established a direct connection to the future time gauge. I've made the necessary modification. You love it? So, uh, what's your plan? It's the best. I left Yuri in the future when I jumped back from the time bridge. If he's alive, I'm getting him out. Then we can use this Project Omega Intel to stop the end of the world. Fair enough. Let's find him. Got eyes on the mercenaries. Knock and loose, Kate. Knock and loose. It's a good missile. Is that a pipe? Sounds like it. I like this weird robotic transition from one animation to another. It's very stupid. Like the yeah. animations themselves when they're happening are smooth, but then like when they stop or when they go to execute it, there's like this like robotic movement to it that makes it look like you said sticky, stiff, weird. This is long, or like this. at least feels long. I'm on my own. <laughs> no. Probably just feels long. Whatever I thought. I feel like we've been watching this for ten minutes. It's work. <laughs> so like, dude, this Avengers game has to do with a purple shirt and sneakers, but he has a bow and arrow and a sword. You can slide Did on the you ground. Think the supreme leader hadn't noticed you. You shouldn't be here, and soon you won't be. Taskmaster. <laughs> Oh look! He's an ugly washed up shield agent in the future too. Nice to know some things never change. This guy's just not impressed with anybody. Did she weigh nothing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What I would do. She came at me. She's like, get out of here. Oh, fuck out of here, please. Someone's happening. And now, let's take a glimpse into some upcoming content. I mean, they're supporting it. Operation Hawkeye. Future. Oh. <laughs> Read faster. Just trying to interpret what I was reading. They have to support it. They lost everybody who's playing it. And all the people who are playing it long term, they're all talking about they're disappointed with it now too. So it's like it's one of those situations where they gotta recover from that. I mean it probably sold fine. I think it undersold from Dr. what they Rebecca wanted Chini. though. Mm -hmm. 
But being under Square Enix, everything's gonna undersell from what Square Enix wants. Why is it not selling like Final Fantasy? You have the tech. Where's the Final Fantasy now? Oh, now. I heard about this too. Full scale invasion. So you get me the army. I'll get you the vibranium. Sincerely, Claw. Like how they kept that out in of this the next game, presentation. Take center Things stage, coming. <laughs> balance and happiness in a magical world. I, I, I had a rumor that if too. you own the game now, when the expansion comes out, you get the expansion for free. Just a rumor. Oh, that's cool. Wonder World. All the stairs. For a hero. Oof. Or two. Because the best way to save the day is together. Oh shit! What is happening? It's a Balan Wonderland. You, Put me uh, in a chicken soup. <laughs> you uh get abilities from. Was she a segway? Oh, she's a vacuum. That's what I'm used to seeing. Is that the thing? Yeah. What is this, the Wonder Twins? Yes. Balan Wonder Twins. If I'm not mistaken, it's the guy who made Sonic. Combine your Gotta power. God of Furries. Unintentional. I don't know why. It wasn't his fault. But I'm getting that vibe. From that old, what was that old Fire saying game where you played as like the jester that flew around? Knights. Like, knights or something like that. True happiness is an adventure. It definitely has something like that going on. This I looks, even though it's 3D, like a Sega game. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> like it, like it reminds me of like if I was playing a Sega Genesis game. Next just up, the art style and everything. The yeah. Of the next yeah, I need to just play the demo. I'm kind of curious about it after seeing gameplay. Yeah, I kind of just expect to be like a 64 era platformer style friends. game, so. I hadn't oh. seen my brother Gabe Fuck. in years. There we go. <laughs> it's just so good to see uh. you again. Welcome to Haven. This place is pretty sweet. Hey, bro, I'm this place is like pretty sweet. My best Hello. And this dude hands me the best beers. <laughs> Alex, right? I'm Steph. I didn't realize that we all knew you were coming for the first time in years. Well, what do you think? I love it. I really let myself believe. Welcome home. I don't know what to believe now, except Gabe is dead. Come to the conclusion that half the showcase is not for us. Gabe is always <laughs> dead. Why is she surprised? Oh, she's got a. Oh, Hearing everyone talk like... about my brother. About hella the sweet, Mike. Yeah, here. it's hella wicked. With all of you. Is there step ass? You start a fire. What happened to Gabe was a senseless, tragic accident. It wasn't an accident. Son, now is not the time. Alex, are you okay? No. They're definitely hiding something. What happened here? Haven's a community. We help each other. Beautiful. Alex, be careful. There's something you should know about. What if I me? play this and love it? Good on them. Yeah. 100. Yeah. percent I, I know I what complain. other people are feeling. I can see these auras around them. If they're angry or sad or afraid, I feel it too. When I focus. I can't even understand why they're feeling it. And if somebody's feeling be, something like, big, totally it infects me, and uh, I lose control. Yeah, <laughs> I've never believe. told anyone. Everyone in Haven is. But now, I can find out what's really going on. Is. You'll need help. Astrology. I've got your back.
I feel like that game should have came out in 2014. Welcome to the world <laughs> premiere of the next major game in the Life is Strange series, developed oh, by Lord Deck Nine it. Games. I'm Maya, Boy. also known as MXM Tune, and I'm a musician and a huge Life is Strange fan. So I'm super excited Same, to be bro. your host for today's show. If you're not familiar with the games, Life is Strange is a series of standalone adventures that explore dramatic, emotional stories about regular people, but with a stunning twist of the supernatural. Life is Strange True Colors features a brand new cast, power, and story. So it's the perfect place to jump in if you're new to the series. Now, let's throw the spotlight over to Deck Nine Games director, Zach Garris and Erica Mori, the actor behind our brand new lead, Alex Chen, for more. Life is Strange True Colors is a game we at Deck Nine have been working on since 2017. It has been a real labor of love for is us. Is he a robot? We are so delighted to share it with you today. Was that a jump cut? What the fuck happened? It's not like he rebooted. Empathy, about how we connect to each other. The story is driven by a that complex was mystery with supernatural elements. No, I'm sorry, I understand the dialogue. By an incredible games. cast, led by our new player character Alex, inspired by jump played cuts. by Erica yeah. Mori. By this what robot. I love most about Alex is she's this smart, resilient young woman who, at the start of the game, has already weathered a really difficult life in the foster care system. But she still has this hope for the future, that somewhere she can find a place to call home. At the invitation of her brother, Alex travels to the town of Haven Springs. It's a fresh start. One thing I'll give them, the beautiful mountain vistas, it took a long time for Telltale and colorful to graphically and fidelity, setting, fidelity wise and get better. 100%. And each one of these guys' America. games I keep seeing look better each time. Like they do increase their quality. So that's nice because um, yeah, at, at least apart. this isn't just like, wow, well, we use the same fucking shit over and over again. Right. I'll give them that. That's all they're getting from me. I want to hug someone like that. Just get fucking. Oh. <laughs> What's the protocol for reuniting with your long lost sister after eight years? In Life is Strange True Colors, Alex's power, or curse, as she calls it at the True. start of the game, is an unparalleled empathic ability. The That's psychic Jamie power Lannister. of empathy. It allows her to experience <laughs> well, the that emotions story's getting of weird. characters around her. It's getting but strange. it's also a volatile power that can bleed into and take over her own emotions if she's not careful. This power is a key part of the game and very much under your control. And there are plenty of opportunities uh, to use your power as you finally explore the streets and spaces of Haven Springs. It's an AI. <laughs> On her very first day in Haven Springs, Alex meets our cast, including two new friends and potential romantic interests. Ryan and Steph, who fans may recognize from Life is Strange Before the Storm. Sick bruh. Our extensive <laughs> so cast Alex of characters is at the heart of every moment of the game. Nah. And for the first time, they're rendered using full performance capture sure technology, captured and animated so here in-house at Deck Nine. Very, very Making this names. the most visually advanced entry in the series and the true next generation of Life is Strange. Damn, they're partying. In Life is Strange True Colors, the mystery surrounding Gabe's death is what ties everything together. Well, he's just a gentle After soul. Alex's brother dies and what appears to be an accident, <laughs> Alex quickly realizes there's a larger story behind what happened to him. He's a text to speech protocol. To get to the truth. Someone's just typing. It becomes clear that only It ain't me, because he'd be saying all sorts of crazy shit while I'm getting pissed off at it not working properly. Really there's <laughs> literally, there is a fucking app we can't Wombo wait for you to experience Alex's that will take journey. a flat picture <laughs> your chance to and turn it into a moving singing thing and for the entire and he's town that of Haven Springs. he's the advanced version of Wombo he's way better than the ones he's, I've made he's a Wombo 3.0 <laughs> he's thing. Wombo I'm excited to reveal that I'm providing Alex Chen's in-game singing voice I think as a longtime fan of Life is Strange being Why even a small here? part of this universe and Good of Alex voice? means the absolute world to me Here's a short clip of Alex feeling uncertain after having a rocky start to her first day in Haven Springs. When you were here before, couldn't look you in the eye. Oh my eye. god, why? You dress like an angel. It's real. Your skin Rear makes like me cry. Sun. 
Fest the known like one. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the known one. It's the one that Radiohead wouldn't play for like fucking like fifteen years because they they didn't like it either. Because the rest of their their album sound nothing like that album. So oh my god! Special. But of course they picked that song. But I'm a creep. I'm a What the hell am I doing here? Edgy, bro. I don't belong here. I am so excited for this game, and I hope that you're feeling the exact same way after this first look. I'm very excited. And now, the big news that you've been waiting for. We're absolutely thrilled to announce that the full game is coming out in September. That's right, the full game. You won't have to wait for the rest of the story. You can binge it all at once, or use the chapter breaks to take a much needed emotional breather. You can pre-order Life is Strange. It's cool, they're releasing all at once. Right now on lifeisstrange.com. I think that episodic experiment in gaming There's also has, has one played out. More yeah, I don't think anyone's really trying it anymore. Thank God. To reveal. We're delighted to announce that Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm were turned yeah, into an all-new uh, remastered collection as a, like featuring a long enhanced visuals and term, animations. like everyone doing a thing. No, thank you. I didn't mind it, but I typically just like TV shows, just waited for the whole thing to be done before I played it, and I don't want it. So, like, I'm not actively trying to have that experience. So, like you said, I didn't mind it, but there's nothing beneficial to it, for sure. Are you trying to be control? No. No, they said they're doing a the remaster of the other games. I just meant with the visual style of things being in which is, things. And <laughs> which is, uh, cool. For people. The Life is Strange remaster sure, they'll remaster those games. Will be available as a tactics. Of the Life is Strange yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. Ultimate Edition. And also I agree with you 100%. As if they're connected. They are. <laughs> connected. Thank you so much Completely. for watching. And make sure to Do keep an eye on the Life Do they need to be remastered? The Are they that old? Right? I think it's a convenient way to resell anything. Sure. Especially with how easy it seems to fucking do, apparently. I just think of The Sims when she did all those poses. Like, those are just yeah, different it, moves. Yeah, it did kind of look like The Sims. It just reminds me of the Pixar movie. I was waiting for her to go fucking e not no we not Guanina. Guanina. And our final update today <laughs> comes from the team at Luminous Productions. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Mm. Hey everyone, I'm Ella Valinska. Today I am super excited to finally announce that I play the lead character Frey in working title Project Athia, a brand new IP from Square Enix and Luminous Productions about a young woman in a beautiful yet threatening world. The development team has been working super, super hard Pretty to create sure this, this remarkable the, gem, the title that and it's been incredibly had, exciting uh, to be a part of it. Frey is a character probably. that I immediately and everyone thought was going to be the 14 when expansion. this project was first brought to me, and mm. I've had so much fun working with the team to bring her character to life in performance capture and voice recording sessions. While we're not quite ready to reveal everything today, we do have a sneak peek at a brand new scene from the game and the final name to share. Have we seen so another enjoy. scene from the game outside of what seemingly seemed like a tech demo? Hide. Is that a motherfucking dragon? I would ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's relatable. Super relatable. A when this happens. It looks good. Yeah, it looks real it's good. Gone. Yes, and we should leave this place as well. Why that thing out there? Oh, That's a new studio they put together, right? Yeah, I believe so. It's kind of neat, especially if they use it to like experiment outside of the lines. Was that it? Was that all they were gonna show? That was the, another scene to show us. Yep. Yeah. That's the name. Forspoken. Yeah. Forspoken. I don't know if I like that. 
I ran through some stuff. Yeah, look at her go. Zipping and dipping. Man, yeah, no, I... I need to see more, but I'm already very intrigued. Thank you for joining very impressed us by the visuals of it. Yeah. Across Square Enix, but there is that looks like Square Enix. Be on the lookout for our next Square Enix <laughs> yeah, presents this summer. <laughs> yeah. Gonna show stuff we saw. Mm -hmm. Recap. And then the song's gonna kill my channel. Mm -hmm. It's over. If you're seeing this video, we survived. <laughs> yeah, if this is happening, this the song wasn't as devastating as I assumed. <laughs> Beautiful, inspiring. Well, I'll give this whole presentation one thing and made me reconsider maybe trying out Balan Wonderland. Mm. This is a demo. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what they were trying to go for with this whole forty four minutes, but and it also just let me know that I want to play Outriders, which I already knew. Yeah. Yep. So that's cool. Uh for Spoken, not Project Athea. Uh definitely looking promising. Yeah. Give me Life is Strange, whatever this is, on PlayStation Plus, I'll, I'll, I'll have to play it. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to. Oh, man of my word. Why is this much more? Holy shit. That, yeah. There is weird. like five minutes of just Square Enix Presents. Was it live streamed? Is that why? This is the song that's gonna kill my channel. I think it was. Time to nip it in the bud. <laughs> yep. All right. So we watched that. Square Enix presents mm -hmm. Spring 2021. Very simplistic name. Mm -hmm. uh, what are our takeaways? What did we like? What, what didn't we like? Uh, and what we think of the presentation overall? And if you're feeling like it, give it a grade. Um. So I think it, it started and ended pretty strong. Which is good. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. The sound um, did kind of mm. feel like it was dragging. Yeah, but I it was also I think they did a good job of kind of keeping it like well rounded for like the different types of people who buy their games. Oh, there's a lot of like genres going on there. Yeah, which is it nice. just wasn't all for you know one person, I I feel. So um thanks YouTube. Uh <laughs> they uh the stuff in the middle, yeah, like you said, uh felt like it kinda of drug on, but I, I think um, you know, a lot of it just wasn't of interest, at least for me, I can say that, um, I did, you know, there was a couple of little spots in there, like seeing the, the Taito stuff was kind of neat to see that they still, uh, make things under those IPs and then, uh, Bell and Wonderland. It was neat to see more of it. Um, I have a, I saw a chicken outfit and I was sold. So well, I've I had like kind of like a, uh, uh, a mild interest in it just because of who's making it. I'm just curious to see if it will be good. Um, yeah, the, the saying the creator of Sonic doesn't do much to sell something for me, considering the mass majority of Sonic as a property is hot garbage. So yeah, how many did he make? Sure. I'm just saying his <laughs> legacy is tarnished. So sure, his, sure. his name, I do like the original Sonic games, but um, it does make me curious. Yeah, one sure. that's the pretty much where I'm at. Is yeah. like I'm curious to see like how well it can do. It's also interesting to see Square publishing um, a platformer, really. Yeah. So um, I know it's a cooperative game either. Yeah, I didn't know it was either. I always see that little little fucking jester dude, and I'm like, I don't. Is this a puzzle game or what? I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, when the demo starts, you pick one of the two characters. Um, so I knew you you played as either the the boy or the girl, but I uh, I didn't realize it was a co op game. So, um, yeah. Other than that, uh, a lot of stuff there that's just not for me. Uh, is but it you know it doesn't have to be. I think the presentation overall there was some parts that kind of that drug on for a little while, but overall it was nice for them to actually have a bunch of stuff to talk about. 
they are really preparing people to buy Outriders because it was eight minutes of Outriders in this. <laughs> yeah, at one that that would be my biggest I think criticism of this whole thing was I think a lot of the segments were just too long. Yeah, they were definitely too long, but um, in a way I kind of like it because a lot of these games I don't know anything about, mm-hmm. and so it was kind of nice for them to sit. The Avengers thing I think was probably and and as a person who does not like Life is Strange, I was much more interested in that than was watching Avengers. I can agree with that because because <laughs> I was curious about what they're going to do with it. Right. Whereas Avengers, I'm like Converse wearing bow and arrow guys sliding around doing the same three moves a lot. That's yeah. for ten minutes. I think also just way too fatigued on superheroes. So. Oh, dude, I've been so. for years. Yeah. Over other than that, um, I'd give it a B minus. I was gonna say C plus, but I do think it was actually put together well. I just, but it does. I think as a presentation, it's done really well. Yeah. Actually, I just the mm-hmm. the content. Some stuff I'm interested in. Some stuff that kind of changed my mind a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of things that I'm like, I'm not the demo. Yeah, for sure. So you said B minus. B minus. Yeah. Um. Chris, what are the thoughts on the presentation? What was shown? Anything that really grabbed you? Anything you, you were bored as fuck watching, possibly? <laughs> well, I, I like the the presentation overall. I think the, the stylization that they did with the, the cutscenes between was really well done and consistent, which yeah. I really liked. It made it feel very well organized and put together. Um, again, the beginning and the end was the, probably the most exciting parts for me. Outriders that I'm, I'm hyped for, and, it, and it, it is all stuff you see in the demo. But again, like you said, it's nice for people who didn't get to play it; they get a chance to see what the game is going to be about. Uh, and then for Spoken is what I expect out of Square Enix these days, as far as graphic fidelity. Like that is what I expect the bar to be for them. So I'm really excited to see that they're kind of reaching that expectation of my own. Um, it just it just from a little bit of looked amazing like i was kind of thrown back a little by it um the rest of it even though the games weren't for me they i think the presentations were really well done uh they weren't they were a little long but they weren't overly explaining i thought the life is strange things could have gone a lot longer and felt it it felt shorter than i was what i was expecting i was like Mm -hmm. as soon as i saw it come up i was like okay here we go brace yourself but as it went on it was not so bad um, well, one thing I'll give the Life is Strange thing is like it was layered. So it sh- it showed the game told you that it's a new game coming out. And then they went into the, some of the behind the scenes and talked about who's doing like the vocal work for singing for it. And then they talked about the remaster. So you got a lot of variety in their segment. Whereas the mm-hmm. Avengers thing, which I think is the low point of this presentation, was silence. It was just watching yeah. somebody play a character with like no dialogue, no one talking over the game, no one saying anything about this, just going like, here to this game that a lot of people don't play anymore, here's a character you can play as. And it's just watch that gameplay in weird little clips for like 10 minutes. And that was really mm-hmm. weird because the rest of the presentation, yeah. nothing was like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely the, the part that felt like it dragged on the longest for me. I like one to take a nap. Um. He's getting tired. <laughs> and I like. I still like superhero things. I'm still into that, but I've always really been into superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Same, and except for fucking now, fatigued. Marvel, Marvel's my wheelhouse when it comes to like superheroes. Like that's what I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And this, this is just, it's kind of disappointing to see how badly the IP has been handled. Um, as far as enjoyment for gameplay, from what I've heard, I've never played it myself, but from what I've heard, people are not happy with it. Well, it's funny because the game came out and there was like not a lot of hype for it some people were hyped for some people weren't i think early on a lot of people lost hype because how different the characters look from it's jarring their you know iconography i guess but um i can overlook that because i also kind of respect them going like no no we're not making the marvel movies we're making fucking our own thing but at the same time the comics have a look too Mm -hmm. and they didn't Mm -hmm. go for a lot of that which was just it, it just kind of separates it a little bit yeah. Uh, which is fine, but then like the gameplay looks like okay, and like a lot of people got lost, including myself, uh, early on. And then the game came out, and some people played it, and they and I heard a bunch of people tell me like, "Oh, it's pretty fun. It's not, it's not bad at all. Like I'm enjoying it." But the way the game's designed, you're supposed to keep playing it and keep accruing loot or whatever the hell. There's there's supposed to be a grind to it, but the thing I start hearing more and more and more and more as the game was out was that 
it's too repetitive and what you get isn't good enough. And like, so it's designed for this longevity, but it's not designed well for it. It expects you to play it, but it doesn't have enough incentive for you to do it. And so the more and more the game had been out, the more I just heard people going like, they really fucked this up. They really kind of botched this, which is interesting. Um, the longer that game existed, the more I heard more disappointment. So I, I hope they could fix that game. But that trailer they showed, well, the gameplay they showed, it didn't really, I mean, did it, did it change your opinion on the game? No, absolutely not. The repetitive nature of the gameplay itself transitioned fully into the trailer. Like, it yeah. just felt like the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it didn't get me pumped for the game. I mean, not at all. When they showed like Black Panther, I'm like, that's cool that they're getting an expansion. Yeah. Like, I'm excited about that for somebody. But and, and part I, of the I problem, not to go the game better. too deep into this conversation, but part of the problem with is like you said, the visuals of the characters. Like, when you're playing a game that's based on established characters, uh, two different looks, even then, you yeah. are looking to play as those characters. Like, you have this idea in your mind already of what you are looking to experience. Like, you want to play as what your ideal superhero is, your, your idol for some people. And to completely, like, change their identity physically is really upsetting and jarring, like you said, to a lot of people. And mm. I can see why it wouldn't be fun. Like, I want to play your own <laughs> OC you know hawkeye i want to play the hawkeye that i know you know mm -hmm. either the movie hawkeye or the comic book hawkeye you know i get it characters go through changes and you know restylings but like it doesn't usually happen within games and go over well in my experience well they're taking big liberties and they're not incentivizing you to give it a chance by gameplay being so good you can't not play it so it's like you're looking at a game and it's telling you it's avengers and you're like is it and then you <laughs> play and you're like is this fun and it's like it just it seems like a misstep. Mm. I almost feel like, it, and this is bad. I don't want to fucking give anyone ideas. I feel like if the game played the way it does and disappoints so many people, I think they would have stuck around longer if the characters looked like the way they're supposed to look. Because at least yeah. like the, it, it feels so detached. Mm. It's like just telling you this is Avengers. Is it? Yeah, I, I promise it's Avengers. Is it? Are you sure? <laughs> yes. It's you're playing Avengers. Am I? Is that what's happening? It's. It's like when someone goes to like some secondhand store and buys you an off-brand copy of the Avengers. This is the Revengers. It's like the Avengers. You'll like it. Yeah, exactly. This is Lieutenant USA, right? That's the one you like. This isn't even in English. <laughs> but overall, I think the presentation outside of that was was well done. And it was really cohesive. Uh, and explained a lot of information that was not going overly expl explanation, uh, not overly explaining things. Uh, I, I give it a B, a solid B. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. Whew. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it two grades, but um, I'll get there in a sec. So, uh, the Outriders presentation, even though it did cover a lot of stuff that the demo covered, um, I I, I liked it. I thought it was cool which is weird to say because a couple weeks ago I was like, fuck this game. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, I want to play that game. I'm definitely going to play that game. I watched this. I'm like, now, now I'm watching the same kind of stuff they're showing before. I'm like, hell yeah. Um, so really, really did a good job changing my mind on that. Um, we did see some stuff that was not in the demo quite a bit. It just flashes of stuff, but you know, some moves that I, that I didn't see in the demo and uh, outfits. We saw the vehicle and I can change it. So I did see some stuff out of this that got me kind of pumped. I'm like, what's that? What's that? What's that? Can I wear that? What is that? So uh, it did its job. Um, and uh, definitely a good way to start because this game's coming out soon. So if yeah. you're going to be here to watch any of this presentation, they better sell you on the game coming out soon because that's the one, you know, they got potential money to be made sooner and later. Uh, Tomb Raider Collection uh, remaster thing or whatever that is. Um, that's cool for anybody who wants all three of them that didn't get them for free on PlayStation Plus because <laughs> um, that's how I got all of them. Uh, I did buy uh, the Xbox one uh bundle that came with one of the tomb raider games that's where i originally played it but then for that i've only played them on playstation because they've been given to me on playstation plus so if you missed that definitely for you um glad tomb raider Lord croft is uh has been around for 25 years uh happy 25th birthday um cookbook i 
not buying that, but I want to fucking check it out. I want to see what's inside there. Is it like, see that dog in your front yard? That's food. You're a survivor. <laughs> Go get it. It's like, that's that's the neighbor's dog. No, no, no. You're hungry. No, it's yours now. You eat what you find. This is survival. Um, that might be the case. I'd definitely read that book. Um, I don't know if I follow it, but I'm, I'm curious about things. I'm like, who the fuck wrote this? Uh, Lord Croft in uh, Fortnite, congratulations. You're one of the big uh, cameos in Fortnite. I and, mean, that's that's great advertising. And in War of the Visions and in uh, Ghost Recon. Yeah. I mean, outside of Mario, Lord Croft's one of the most iconic mm. and, and visually identifiable characters ever in gaming. Yeah. Um, people who don't play video games know who Lord Croft is. So um, kind of makes sense that you, you if you're going to put someone in a game, be like, hey, put the person everyone knows in it. Um, so that's cool. Uh, happy for Tomb Raider. You know, they've kind of gotten into a place where I'm not really the biggest Tomb Raider fan, but I, I respect what they do with it. They're, they're, they're all right games. Uh, mobile games, dude, I don't give a fuck. And I, I love Just Cause. Um, but watching that trailer, I'm like, this feels kind of lame um for a split second i was like maybe they are adding multiplayer that'd be weird because we've i've bitched about that before in prior episodes i'm like there's been mods for a long time on different just cause games the community's been like we have multiplayer we'll make multiplayer and then they're like you want multiplayer hmm mobile game very cool thanks (laughs) that's what you meant right i think that's where things start to go awry in this presentation we got outriders i'm in it dude i'm fucking ready i'm ready for april 1st tomb raider congrats awesome and then mobile games <laughs> fucking uh space invaders i'm like you know what i can i can celebrate as much as the next person old games but this ain't doing much for me um darius darius how do you say it uh it's cool i i I haven't played a bull hell game in a long time. I would definitely be open to playing one again. I'd like to see someone try and evolve the genre, uh, but the people who make Nier did that. So um, Yeah, they did. Yeah, so I'll just <laughs> take that. I'll take the next Nier game. Because um, I was like, what? how could you evolve? Oh, just make really dope games with bull hell stuff in it. Cool. Just make um, Nier. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just a great game. Avengers, I, like I said, I've already emphasized this. This is the low point, and I don't like Life is Strange. Um the, I don't know about the new one. I haven't played it, but uh, so this being the low point is kind of weird for me. But uh, it didn't do much for me. Um, but and I may be sounding super negative. If you're a big fan of the Avengers game, let me know in the comments. Like maybe I should reconsider. I'm absolutely willing. Like if someone's like, no, 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 hold on, you got it completely wrong. You should definitely pick that game up. And here's why. I might do it. And if I love it, Outriders. I'll fuck. I'll change my mind. Yeah. Like if the game's good, I want games to be good for sure. I'm not someone who likes to shit on stuff for fun. Um, but I also will just say what the fuck I think. So in this game <laughs> is not doing it for me. Um, life is strange. I honestly, I was kind of interested. Um, we're not at that part right now, but, uh, um, it's kind of interested in what they're doing with it. Just to kind of see where they're going with it. I will see. I'm sure the people who like life is strange already will love it. And the people who don't like yeah. life is strange will not like life is strange. Uh, three or wherever the hell it is. And, uh, I think that game is just for certain people. Um, but maybe they will prove me wrong and make a great game and I'll play them like holy shit this game is great and I will absolutely admit that if I like it Um, if they give it to me because I'm not buying it Um, Balan Wonderland a little creepy people with the big eyes Um, pretty creepy but gameplay looks interesting I had no idea it was a co-op game didn't know it was kind of like an old school platformer where you get to dress up in chicken suits I love chicken suits, Bigfoot suit, little dragon puppy suit. Like I'm, I'm kind of really into these little animations too, where they're like, Ugh. I don't know. I kind of want to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to do anything for anybody who's listening to this on fucking iTunes or anything. Like, what's that? What's he doing? Um, <laughs> do they do that in the video? I, I couldn't see it. Um, yeah. Life is strange. Cool. Happy for you guys with the new game coming out. I like that they're releasing it all at once. Yeah, that's dope mm-hmm. for people who just want to get all the content. You can play it as you want. It's episodic, but you get all the episodes. Well, they said in episode mode, you you could do that. You can take s- breaks. You can yeah, still which is still, cool. Uh, take it in that way if you want to. Also, I'll give them credit as well the the fact that they they constantly um they change up the the story. 
instead it's, of it just being it's uh, an anthology, yeah. which is cool. I, I actually mm-hmm. really like anthology. So, and that does give me some hope that maybe one would get me yeah. because even if I didn't like the first game, maybe I play another one. It's got different story, different characters, and that one might do it. So maybe I should play the one that came out after the first one and see if that one it's does anything for me. Kid? I think so. Yeah. Um, Captain Underpants, where the hell was whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then yeah, maybe maybe I'll play this one like it. Uh, the remaster, you know, I feel like you can still play Life is Strange on any console you have right now. Uh, if you have a PS5 or an Xbox one, or Series X, uh, and you had it on the last console, you probably can still play it. So I'm curious about how much they're updating. Maybe they said it. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. Um, but that's cool. If you want to buy the the two together, or whatever remaster, that's dope. Um, I think. Let's see. What was the last little things here? Forspoken. Uh, Forspoken. I don't like the name, but that doesn't matter. Um, gameplay wise, uh, it's it's a pleasant surprise. Uh, we saw the early like tech demo of somebody yeah. running forward and jumping from these little island to island, and even then it looked pretty decent, but mm-hmm. looked early build. Um, it kind of mm-hmm. reminded me of Final Fantasy fifteen. Uh, where it had like this weird on the edges they weren't very smoothed out mm. and it looked kind of like crunchy the game was a nice looking game but it's kind of like the anti-aliasing was kind of fucked and some of the things had this weird texture fade in thing going on it kind of looked like that but you could kind of tell they were building something that was going to look good finally seeing gameplay here um which we're looking at right now um it, it looks a lot more cleaned up the animations look really nice we can talk about the graphics, of course. The graphics look good, but I think anything, even on like Unreal Engine or anything, can look really good nowadays. Uh, but I'm really impressed with the effects and the footwork and the blur and stuff like that. Her running up that wall looked really good. So I have no idea about the story or anything like that, but um, definitely intrigued. Definitely, like, we'll be keeping an eye on that game. Isn't that the... I think that is the 15 devs. I think so. I, yeah, I don't know so. if it's a new team or not. Let us know in the comments. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel kind of mixed on this. So if I want to give a, a grade for the presentation itself and the way they did it outside the Avengers part, I'd probably give it a fucking B+. Plus. I think the presentation was done really well. Content-wise, though, I think I'd give it a fucking C+. Plus. Uh, some things uh, were already games I'm stoked about. It's a little bit extra on them uh some things i don't give a fuck about some things i was like oh my god i don't want to watch this any longer and other things i was like "Eh, keep an eye on it um but really a lot of that is just not for me and it's not like you know it's shit or anything like that so i can't dock it too hard but for me um there was a couple times there where i was getting kind of sleepy feeling like uh when you watch an ea presentation and they start bringing out the sports stuff that's when snap time for me um or trying to <laughs> convince you on the third year of the game being out that, you know, Battlefield is good, I promise. Just buy it, please. I'm sorry we did that to you guys. Um, that kind of thing. Typically, I'm like, okay, here we go. Um, but, yeah, a really really good presentation. I think they did a good job um, with the transitions, the pacing for the most part. I really like the animations. I think it looked really good uh, in the presentation. And the content um, was pretty much like, hey, Things are coming this year. Buy them, please. Celebrate Tomb Raider and look out for uh, Forspoken. Next year. Little, yeah. It did it say next year? 2022. Oh, wow. It's coming out way sooner than I thought it'd be. Oh. But it look, they looked pretty clean already. So, mm. so yeah. All in all, pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely don't regret watching it. There's, yeah. some, there's some struggle points there. Every once in a while, I was like, oh, fuck. Here we yes, go. I was definitely curious what they were going to put in the time frame of it because i did not avoid the internet today and neither yeah and so i i was like deep in twitter looking at like oh there's something about tomb raider or there's something about this thing and someone's like <laughs> oh there's a whole presentation I'm like there's oh shit yeah i didn't know there's a presentation we'll probably have to watch that i'm gonna stop looking now <laughs> like I, I had no idea this was gonna happen today so um yeah i saw um I saw the Forspoken title a couple times just because some of the people I follow on Twitter. And I was like, oh, okay. They, that's, they did use the name for, for something else they were already working on. And then uh, I saw... I think I saw a blip of Tomb Raider, but I didn't see any details. I just saw the name a bunch. I saw there was a Tomb Raider cookbook coming out. That was a joke. 
I didn't see that. So. I didn't hear anything about the Tomb Raider or anything else. It was just someone's like, there's a Tomb Raider cookbook. And I'm like, ha, okay. Yeah, and then I saw a lot about Life is Strange. Yeah, that's all I saw on oh, Twitter. Yeah. So. And in the comments, it was people going like, ha, this game sucks. And people going, oh, my God, I'm so excited. And I'm like, this is literally, this game literally is just like polarizing. Like, yeah. you, you either dig it or you don't. <laughs> You're crying, but that either out of hate or love. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's one of those games, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like The Last is Part Two. Like you're either crying because you love it or yeah, you hate it. Yeah. Like there's no in between. Um, That's fandoms for you. Only certain ones, though. Some of them are a lot more chill. Um, yeah. So, uh, anything else you guys want to say when it comes to this presentation? Um. Not this one specifically, but I do hope they keep dabbling in this. Maybe not in 45-minute format. Um, even if they did like 10, 15-minute presentations from time to time, um, it would be welcome because Square is kind of a quiet company most of the time. So, uh, Yeah. I mean, there's a time there where they'd be like gone for like three years. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what are they doing? And then they're like, Final Fantasy 15 is coming out in seven years. And it's like, okay. Yeah, and it doesn't always have to be a Final Fantasy announcement. Like, you are a publisher. Like, Show us what you got, yeah. what you're paying. Which for. I think they did, mm-hmm. yeah. did here <laughs> exactly. So, so. Yeah. Um, like if you are going to be the publisher and you're going to be doing stuff like Ubisoft and EA and Activision, where you're publishing yep. shit, show it have off. these have these presentations. You're you're a big company. So yeah. Not that I have to encourage Square Enix to do things, but like <laughs> you can do it, buddy. <laughs> Fucking Come have on, some confidence. Go on. Yeah, for you got sure. this. Square Enix is like I don't know if I want to show things off, and I just show it off. I don't know. I'm shy. Bound Wonderland. Who cares about and, it? I don't know. Show them. And Maybe they will care. They've they've done a really good job too of of lately, like showing off things that are within a couple of years of release too, which is nice because Square's had the old Square, I should say, was really bad about that's being what, like that's what I'm saying. We're making a game. You wouldn't hear from and you're them. like when? No, I don't know. We're making it. That's what I'm saying. They, they used <laughs> to like be gone for three years and like what's Square Enix doing outside of releasing <laughs> shitty. Uh, versions of Parasite Eve and Dirge of Cerberus. Uh, and then they'd come out and be like, Final Fantasy 15 Versus coming out in 20 years. Ajito and then they disappear again. It's 15. like, what the fuck was that? What what game is that? And like then the fucking Groundhog. And then six years later, they come out and they're like, by the way, it's that Versus. That's just, that's just 15. That's, that's the new game. It's like, oh, okay. And then they just Those assets again. look familiar. But yeah, but they're in a new engine. <laughs> this is the new game. That's not what we said it was before. Don't listen to us. We don't know what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Anything else? Mm-mm. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of this presentation. Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Probably should be. Uh, what are you most excited for that they showed off? What are you least excited for? Are you excited for Life is Strange? What was the third? Life is Strange 3? True I feel, Colors? I feel things. True Colors? Something about colors. I think that's what it's called. You excited for that? Are you playing Avengers or have you played Avengers? And do you have good things to say about it? Let's do that. Should we assemble? Let's should we assemble? Let (laughs) us know in the comments. I promise I'm open minded on that. Um, Outriders, you excited for that? Are you picking it up? Are you playing it on Game Pass? They're releasing that shit day one on Game Pass, so like you don't even have to buy the game. And uh, I think yeah, it's gonna be on phone as well. If you got an Android phone, soon you'll be able to play that on iPhone though. Once they do the browser-based shit, they're getting around that. They're going to have to. Soon you're going to be able to play Game Pass on everything. You should be on your TV and be like, browser, Game Pass. I'm using my remote control to play Avengers. <laughs> on my smart fridge. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be on everything. Um, and yeah, if you want to, grade the presentation. Did you like it? And uh, yeah, let us know everything you're thinking about in the comments below. All right, uh, it's that time where we reflect on prior episodes and read your comments. If you want your comment to be read, type in hashtag AskTLG in your comment. Otherwise, I pick at random, or sometimes, like last week and this week, we don't get a whole lot of comments, so it makes it real easy on my part. Um, I'm just going to read them all. So, uh, yeah, going back, uh, we did an episode which did not have the chapters uh, in the black bars like I typically do. Oh, yeah, Adobe Premiere did something weird after an update. It's fixed now. This episode should have those, hopefully. Look up here. Maybe it's there. I don't know. Um, and anyway, yeah, we uh, 
We talked about uh, Xbox officially uh, owning Bethesda. We talked about exclusives when it comes to that. Should they be exclusive? Will they be exclusive? Make sure to go check out that uh, discussion if you're curious about our thoughts on that. And then we watched some Watch Dogs Legion online gameplay because they just snuck that shit. They pulled a Square Enix and went, here you go. And they just kind of dropped it on the ground. I'm like, what's that? Like, that's Watch Dogs Legion online. (laughs) Is it good? I don't know. Just check it out, dude. I don't know. Um, I so, don't know. So they did that and we watched a video. <laughs> Look, man, it's work here. They made it. I just hear play it. Um, and, uh, and, and we talked about this. So check out that episode. Well. We got some comments here. First one from Mark Dupree that says, well, I finally did it. I just registered and started my Final Fantasy 14 free trial. DL download. Uh, does it have what it takes to take over my Spotify subscription? I can only afford one. Er, what do you guys think? Would you pay for Final Fantasy fourteen or Spotify? It's an easy answer, I'm sure, because I think you'd probably pay for one already. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of weird about music subscription anyway, so like, I, I tend to just buy albums, um, and then anything I want to listen to, I listen to on I, YouTube. I, I pay. I'm weird. I pay for, although not as weird as somebody I know who was paying for the premium YouTube. I know one person's done that. They know who they are. Um but I pay for Prime Music. I don't pay for Spotify. Yeah. People are like, you, you use Spotify? I'm like, no. And like, you don't have Spotify? I'm like, no. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'll use it every once in a while, but I don't mind listening to the ads in that case because I, I just consider it listening to the radio at that point. It's one, Yeah, it's 100%. Yeah. 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 Uh, versus like when I want to listen to something, I just go on to um, iTunes and I buy it. So, yeah. Um, which is uh, very decent of you in the modern times, because a lot of a lot of a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people who make music uh, really appreciate you because yeah. you're supporting them and not depending on Spotify to give them crumbs. I always been that way, anyways. Though, like, I don't even have Game Pass, and even though it's a great value, oh, one hundred percent, I yeah. I buy games. It's like that guy who's making so. It Takes Two and A Way Out. Mm-hmm. He was asked recently about Game Pass, and he's like, I don't like it. He's like, how the fuck do you get paid? <laughs> like, he doesn't even know he's in the industry. <laughs> like, he was just straight up confused. He's like, I don't like it. I'm like, that's that's fair. He's Maybe he's a boomer. I don't know. Like, fucking, maybe he's, he wants to buy CDs. He doesn't what wanna, is this pittance? <laughs> yeah, he, he was just not on board with it. And I, I think it's a fair, I mean, Microsoft doesn't even make money off of it, really. They're, well, just, they're I, sucking you in. That's the strategy. And then later they'll be like, oh, price hike. People in the music industry always talk about how shitty streaming, you know, uh, pay revenue is anyway. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I'm the type of person that I, I, I just go out and buy stuff. So it is easy for me to say the 14 is better, but I'm going to be very realistic. Uh, play the free trial. Yeah. Which you, you're going to do. And they're super generous with it now. You can get all the way um through heaven's award now so level 60 the level cap's 80 so i mean like you get a huge chunk of the game two full storylines so even if you don't end up paying a dime for it you still get two free games yeah yeah and if you have played it since that comment let us know in the comments what you think of it so far yeah and if you have questions me and chris kind of play yeah if you got quite we got a, we got a whole ass discord <laughs> don't drag, don't drag me into this <laughs> where people play that game so you definitely have a community here for that yeah um for me i don't really interact with either of them all too much but i definitely would pay for fun fans 14 over spotify any day um i think you need to get in there and beat it before the end of the year too i, I got a lot of things to do this year apparently uh, i gotta be fun Fantasy 7 yeah, you, you can do that in like a day or two because you've already started it. That's true. True. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy fourteen is a really good MMO, 100%. Um, yeah. Spotify, yeah, it's fun. If uh, if you want to skip those ads, pay for it. 100%, yeah. Uh, Chris, any input on that? I have both. I got, I got no room to speak on it. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to do both. Yeah, but okay, but he also specifies he can only afford one. So what would you pick? Whichever one brings you more joy. Play the trial. So neutral. Give it a run if you enjoy it. More than Spotify, obviously stay with it. Mm. You use music more often. If you use Spotify more often in your day-to-day life, uh, it might be something you might consider sticking with instead. I love Final Fantasy XIV, but Spotify has a more broader use, I would argue, than Final Fantasy XIV does. 
Yeah, I, uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, it really just comes down to picking songs specifically to play and skipping and not hearing commercials on Spotify. So you could still have Spotify while playing 14 if it's something that you enjoy. So you're not really missing out too much other than like the complete control. On what, Chris, what Chris is saying is play Final Fantasy 14. He's very excited. On the right server. Make sure you pick the right server. Yeah, their server, our server. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, and then Mark Dupree also says, Outriders Day and Date on Game Pass. Very nice. I was actually interested in checking it out. It kind of reminded me of Borderlands in the, in the style of Mass Effect-ish. <laughs> that threw me off. Mass Effect-ish style shooter. I mean, kind yeah, of, that's kind yeah. of something I was saying, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it kind of has, like, this Mass Effect feeling because it's got that, like, wall-to-wall cover, uh, powers while shooting uh, feel to it. Uh, Borderlands, kind of, in a way, especially in, like, you know, shooting people in their, like, you know, weak spots or whatever. Um, and grinding for loot and stuff like that. And, and grind for loot, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, Not as robust as Borderlands. Borderlands will just dump, like, a hundred guns on me that are all different. I have no use for any of them. It's torchlight. I'm like, I don't know what all the shit is. <laughs> um, yeah, it just gives, it's just like if, if Ubisoft's popping out going to play this online thing, I don't know what it is. Uh, they do that with guns in Borderlands. They just dump a bag of guns on me. I'm like, is there anything good in there? Like, I don't know. Check it out. Find something. We didn't check. Yeah. We don't, we don't know what's in there. There's too many guns. Why would we do that? Um, and then of course people keep bringing it up and, and I, I agree to a certain extent uh, and you know they have worked on the series uh, it does have Gears of War vibes to it but I'm hesitant to say that because I don't like Gears of War uh, personally it's just the gameplay I'm not really into um, and I feel like combat feels to me in my opinion better um, but because Gears of War is a game where you run behind cover and go from room to room and kill boxes killing a bunch of enemies until you can go to the next thing it does have that feel but it does offer I think more variety in combat to be more interesting for someone like me who needs something a little bit more than just shooting five clips into an enemy and and then chainsawing. Yeah. Um, You can do that in doom. True. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, yeah, I agree with you. Outriders coming out on game pass. That's, that's a fucking, that's a steal for sure. Brand new game. Uh, I'm sure hours and hours and hours of content. You're already paying for game pass. Fucking great, great deal. Great deal. So, any guys want to add to that? Um, I mean, no. I mean, it's it's just great to see that uh, Microsoft's very aggressive with Game Pass because um, you know obviously they need to be in in some way, um, and they've been showing uh, recently, especially in the last you know couple of years, that they are going to be aggressive with Game Pass and they're going to buy every established IP on the market. You guys see that uh, PlayStation owns Evo now? I did. It's a weird one. It's a weird one, yeah. I, I literally like saw this. Tournament? Yes. Yeah, PlayStation owns it now. Yeah, it, well, Sony owns it. It's under like well, yeah, but Sony. It's under a, 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 their entertainment branch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. And this this happens, so when I'm on Twitter, I'm like, I follow gaming stuff and then political shit. It's a horrible mix because both communities are awful. But like in a Fair. lot of ways when it comes to like <laughs> what they're into. like so You just got to add uh, movies in there and it, you got yeah. all the crazy So one people. thing I see a lot in politics is somebody will post something that happened. And because a lot of people don't look into things, they just go, someone explained, what, is it, what does this mean? And then you got a bunch of assholes going, this is what I think it means, and it just turns into telephone. Uh, that doesn't happen in gaming too much, but I saw it's like Sony owns Evo. And I looked in the comments, I saw people going like, what does this mean? And I'm like, what do you mean? What, do you mean? what does it mean? They own, they own the fucking, they own it. Like, And then, of course, people are like, Xbox better. I'm like, it's not even, this isn't a game. Oh, yeah, that's just them jabbing. I Although I love the meme of, I'll see, I'll see somebody say nothing about Xbox or PlayStation, and comments will just full people going like, yeah, but Xbox is better. Or people are like, yeah, PS5 is better. That, that's like TikTok in a nutshell. Any video game comes up, and it won't even be an advertisement for any console. You won't even know what they're playing on. Someone's like talking about uh, their experience in the game, and they won't bring it up either. The next comment is something like, best on Xbox. Like, 
Where did you come these, from? These people aren't even saying best on Xbox. They say Xbox is better. I forgot uh-huh. what it was earlier. It was like a DLC coming out for a game, and someone's like, Xbox is better. And some guy's like, then the DLC? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And they start arguing. I'm like, I have no stake here. Like, I have no, no, I'm, I'm not part of this conversation. I'm just enjoying that this exists. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The people are like, everything about gaming, they're like, this is better. This, or, people, or someone will pop up, someone's, someone's like, PS5 is a waste, dude. It has nothing to do with PS5 or Xbox. I'm like, what? You guys are just fucking roaming around the internet looking for console wars they to be having control c oh that's about gaming paste that's about gaming paste that's about gaming paste <laughs> tomb raider cookbook ps5 is better i'm like well yeah i agree with you but i don't know what the hell it's got to do with anything um are we cooking one could be i forgot how i even got there where i'm talking about or what i'm talking about right now so uh, anything else you guys want to say on this <laughs> mm-hmm Chris, you uh, you excited for Outriders Day One date Game Pass and uh, do you agree when it comes to Borderlands and Mass Effect ish style shooting? Yeah, I'm fucking stoked for it. I'm hyped that I have Game Pass and I'm getting access to this game day one. Like I'm fucking stoked. Don't even gotta buy it. Like, and, huh? Don't even gotta buy it. You just get the exactly. Play. Yeah, exactly. It's, cool. it's great. You just have the subscription service. Give your soul to Microsoft. Oh, they got it. That's Who said I had a soul to begin with? <laughs> Microsoft has it. I work for Safeway. They have it. True. (laughs) They definitely got a piece of that. (laughs) All right. Thank you for the comment. Uh, We got another comment from Simon Borderline Dumpster Fire Randall. It's a big one. He says, Microsoft making Bethesda titles exclusive will be a dump on Sony, but I'll give a shit the moment they let Bloodborne come to PC. You heard? Um... (laughs) So yeah, I do think I do I agree with you when it comes to Bethesda. Uh it is a big dump on Sony. Um in a way. Uh Bloodborne on PC would be fantastic. It's been long enough and uh I think there's a lot of people who don't play on PlayStation who would love to play Bloodborne and I would love for them to play it. Although I do think it's smart for Sony to maintain their exclusives. Especially and at this point. Because it is a very very strong part of what they offer outside of their unique experience that is the ps5 um so you know if you're gonna do pc releases uh you know it's not fun for anybody who's only on pc but for sony as a company uh for playstation as their brand um let bloodborne born exist when it came out for maybe like a year or two and then you know start releasing it then although a lot of people are pissed about that idea i i think exclusives are important but I think after a while, you know, allowing everyone to play, I think is smart. And maybe people will rebuy it on PC if it maybe runs smoother, plays better. In I, some got, way. I got a plan. They announced Bloodborne 2, and then immediately after, oh, and Bloodborne's coming to PC. That'd be a great announcement. Yeah. So. Mm, mm. yeah. Um, you guys have anything to add to that before we move on to the next part? Uh, no, because I don't really have opinions about Bethesda that are worth talking about anymore. And, you know, Bloodborne's. <laughs> Cool game. So six, my favorite one. <laughs> okay, moving on. We got oh, and as a PC fanboy who also has a Series X and access to a PS5, if Microsoft makes Elder Scrolls Six exclusive, what's my PC ass going to do? I'm positive that Sony won't let some Microsoft push products hit Windows, will they? Uh, so goodbye modding. True about the modding for sure they're kind of weird about that anyway though like um yeah i don't know uh but uh let's see what were you saying about the Elder scrolls exclusive thing yeah I, again we're on we're all on pc so mm-hmm. Elder scrolls comes out it's on pc it's exclusive to to microsoft that's where we're playing it so on pc it doesn't affect if us if i'm mm-hmm. playing it if yep. i'm i'm hoping i'm hoping <sighs> they'll show it and i'm like okay finally they're up upgrading something it's not the same shit over and over and over again uh continuing it says i wasn't referring to ubisoft with the call out was kind of referring to most open world games in general ubi ones included very few games reward exploration you weren't making that call out i was implying you made that call out as me calling them out so just to clarify uh because ubisoft is absolutely I know what the absolutely the fucking guilty of doing that shit. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm using you to fucking talk shit about Ubisoft, okay? 
Um, <laughs> Ubi ones included. Very few games reward exploration as much as from games do. Even those that do reward it don't reward looking around and figuring out environmental puzzles and finding hidden paths and so on in that way that really matters. It's not just uh, an attention to detail. It's intuitive game design. I agree with you 100%. Uh, kind of what I expected from Cyberpunk, for example. Even Dark Souls 3, which is the most linear of Souls games, barring Demon Souls, has some seriously badass pathing too, when you have to sit in dragon meditation uh, for a while to get to Nameless mm. King, or find the hidden door leading to champion uh, Gundir, uh, Gundir uh, etc. Mm. Um, Dark Souls 2 probably has the most branching through... Uh, though sometimes, like frigid outskirts or frigid outskirts, uh, it's more of a punishment than a reward. But then some people cut themselves. So whatever that area is there for certain Jesus. people. Um, so all that I'm going to condense to. Uh, I pretty much agree with everything you're saying. Um, I, I like I said in the prior episode and past episodes. Uh, I think From Software is uh, fucking amazing at, at their design and. I'm glad you bring up Dark Souls 2 because it's one of my favorite Dark Souls. I love them all. So saying that's simple. There's three of them. But like, uh, but it's one that people really shit on. And I think you bring up a really good point. Dark Souls 3 is amazing. And I think it like it has some really fucking beautiful uh, locations. Um, really cool to explore. But it does feel linear compared to other Dark Souls. And especially like in Dark Souls, you start Dark Souls and you can just go in like one of three directions, like just go wherever the fuck. And one way is going to be way harder than the other one. Um, but I love the exploration in Dark Souls too, and no one talks about it. There's so many nooks and crannies to explore and so many things that feel like a secret when you find it for the first time. And they all have that, but Dark Souls 2, I just have a re I just love exploring that world. Um, the environments and and the the intuitive uh level design uh that you're talking about so i mean i you're not going to get an argument from me i agree with everything you said there um and then yeah rewarding uh exploration it's, you know a lot of games are not good at it some games kind of half acid sometimes you go down a way you find something sometimes you go down a way and you don't find anything but uh everything in from software games feels on purpose they've designed it in a way that 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 it was all intended. Um, and it, that's why it feels rewarding. It's because if you do find something, you find a path, you find something that feels secret, you go down an alley, there's typically some reason you went down there. It doesn't feel wasted. And I mean, everything feels intentional uh, in a From Software game. So uh, I agree with you 100% on that as well. And uh, yeah, shout out to Dark Souls 2. Get shit on so much. I fucking love that game. Because of anything to add? Hard for me to add anything to that because I don't really do. Do you, do you like rewarding exploration? I, I like linear games. This is true. <laughs> Show doesn't want to explore. He wants to just. I don't. Go, progress through the storyline, have a cool story, and, and be level done. up. Yeah. But there's like a difference between like an open world exploration and like Dark Souls exploration. Sure. Because they're linear games that have pathings that that all are intentional but you might miss them and uh it's almost it's almost like like the game's designed like dungeons it's really weird yeah like the whole world is I, and i appreciate it so i'm excited for their new game as an open world game because i feel like they're going to be like compounds of like being these intricate designed castles and dungeons to yeah. explore mm -hmm. I, yeah mm -hmm. I, just, I don't play souls games either so yeah <laughs> so for demon souls you play the shell that once i did do that one time yeah, yeah. chris anything to add I, I mean, I said in the video, I mean, I, this is, I'm not worried at all. This is something that software has, they're really capable of doing. And then on a bigger scale, like you said, it's probably just going to be a bunch of like castles and things that are intricately, intricately designed. And they're probably going to be all interconnected lore wise somehow. And they're all going to affect each other some way or another with paths that connect maybe to another, if you don't know, you know, explore all the right ways. So, I mean, they, they, they know what they're doing with this. They have the formula down. They do it well all, every time. I've never had any bad times playing any Dark Souls games. I love them all. They're great. I just have some preferences over others just for gameplay-wise. Um, mm. But I don't think this is going to be a problem. It's going to be... I think it's going to be <laughs> glorious, to be honest. <laughs> glorious. Did you ever play Sekiro? No. That's, that's one I didn't play just because of... Uh, I want to make my characters. That's a big, yeah. big draw for me. It is neat that they actually try and tell a story, though, in a way that's not for sure. Dark Souls-like. 
uh, that kind of threw me off when I started playing. There's like cutscenes and shit and characters talking. I was like, what is happening? Why well, I don't have to like read the walls and the air and just kind of get a sense of history here to understand what's going on here. Um, yeah, and then uh, last part of his comment. Uh, and yes, shitting on Xbox in a PlayStation shirt was asking for it. Caught in 4K, instant unsub. I'm leaving the Discord too. All my homies hang out in the Phil Spencer garden. You know, if there's a garden for anybody by name, I hope it's Phil Spencer. He deserves a garden. He seems like a nice dude. He seems like he probably waters that garden. He probably doesn't pay people to do it. He probably does it while you guys hang out in the garden. So it's probably a real nice place to hang out. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a good look. I got caught. Wasn't in 4K. I am fucking uploading 4K. Are you, are you high? Um, say, imagine, imagine Seth having time for 4K. Yeah, I, I'm a busy <laughs> motherfucker. I'm not, unless I'm like real proud of an episode, I'm like, this needs to be in 4K. It doesn't happen very often. I'll but put uh, this at 938p. But I'll make you a deal. You want to you wanna feel empowered for a split second? Hit that unsub real quick and then sub right back. You don't have to tell me. Just do it. And we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully. Uh, You'll be back. You and you can be in Phil Spencer Garden and and our Discord link down below. Anybody can talk to us anytime, all time. You can be in both of them at the same time. You can do that. When uh, when you be yourself, you be a winner. Remember that. Remember as remember as Daddy Chevy told you. Um, I don't want to be Daddy. Your Daddy to Simon. <laughs> He's the son you never had. Um, thank you everybody for. Oh, do you guys have anything to add to me I, getting called I, out? I already commented. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the comments, everybody. Mm. And moving on to the last episode, we got one comment, very brief, but this was our reacting to D and D dark Alliance gameplay and dev diary to check that out. If you're interested, um, in that game or what we thought of it, uh, kind of, uh, kind of an interesting discussion we have there. Cause it's a game that we're like, eh, it could be good, could not be mm. good. There's, there's some nuance to it. Typically we just watch something we're really stoked for, but this an interesting conversation. Check that out. Uh, the one comment we got from Mark Dupree again is D and D. Okay, I'm listening. Dot dot dot. I'll update after or during unless uh, ADD takes over and I completely forget. I feel that I've never been diagnosed with anything, but I feel I have a pretty app, like hyperactive mind. If you've ever heard me talk, which you probably have because you're here. Um, but uh, D and D, we got a we got a fellow nerd which is always nice. Uh, continuing, says edit. It's kind of meh so far to me, uh, but hear me out. D&D BR, which I'm assuming you're meaning Battle Royale. Woo ha, wah, wah. <laughs> I can't read that. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I don't know if you should be kidding. I actually, uh, I welcome them making D&D games in general. Let's get some more D and D games. There's plenty of space in genres where you can make multiple different types of D and D games. And if one of them, not only if there's only one, but if there's one of many D and D games that happen to be battle rail, I'd fucking play it. I'd try it out as long as it's a solid one. As long as it's not like a shitty, let's just copy Fortnite game. Um, I'd, I'd play it. Has, so. Hasbro just needs to pull a Microsoft, find people who are good at making certain things, and go. You make our stuff now. True. That's what they do. They're the Borg. You, you get the the uh the guys who make Vermintide, you go, Hey, make a D and D one. And you get That'd be sick. They have they already have uh, that would be dope. uh was it Laren Studios doing Boulder's Gate? So they got that genre under control. And you, you do a fighting game, you're like, Hey, Arc System works, make a D and D fighting game. <laughs> D and D fighting game would be weird. <laughs> it would be <laughs> plays a beholder. Ooh, make a, a asymmetrical D and D game where three or four people are on a team going through a dungeon. Somebody plays as one of the many monsters in D and D, trying to defeat them while they're trying to go through the dungeon. Just make a four v one game at that point. Asymmetrical. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like uh, Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Be sick. Just make a tactical game. D and D tactical game. Just make Final Fantasy Tactics. Just make it. Just I mean, release it so I can isn't buy it. Isn't that basically what Tactics is? Is D and D in the Final Fantasy universe? It Every, is. Everything comes back to FFT with you. Yes, it does. I'm Everything. glad you understand this now. Should I pay for Spotify? Well, you can listen to Final Fantasy Tactics soundtrack on there. If you can't, you should be able to. So Look, maybe. If you're not Tri-section. completely immersed in Ivalice, are you even human? Yeah. Are you even alive? Are you <laughs> even Final Fantasy like... Tactics? If you don't Final <laughs> Fantasy Tactics, what are we talking about here? <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Do yeah. you guys want to add to that? Uh, well, to the, to the actual commentary about like the the game itself, um, I don't know if I'm quite in the kind of meh part, but I am definitely like hesitant only because of the the there's so many unknowns, man. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I want to see more on it, but I if I'm being honest, and I I don't talk about it in the episode, so check that out. But uh, I'm I'm probably gonna buy it. I'm willing to take the, the <laughs> risk. Well, I was say, if anyone here is gonna just go, yeah, fuck, I'm gonna buy a game with you. So yeah. <laughs> Unless on Game Pass, I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't buy it. And then Chris will play it. Then Chris will play it too. Exactly. And then I'm like, Chevy, what are you doing? I'm like trying to stay awake in my computer chair. <laughs> Chris, do you want a D and D battle royale? I don't want any more battle royales. None. Cancel them all. Fucking, they need to be extinct. You heard it here first. <laughs> I don't know about canceling Wipe them, them out, all, but you know, yeah, the ones Wipe that exist, out. they can get rid of those too. Yep, end them. Just end them. Let's Burn just pretend the, the genre doesn't exist. I don't think Epic is going to listen to you on that one. No. I don't care what Epic does. You listen to me right now. Burn it to the ground. Pretty sure Epic could just buy your opinions. I don't know. I think I got enough money to do that. Oh, they got some uh, money. They can throw away a whole game. Get at me, Epic. We'll talk. <laughs> they could bury you in V-Bucks and no one would see you again. If Chris comes back on Tasty Cast the next Tasty Cast... If he comes back on the next Taste of Cast and he's like, you know what, I, I, I was thinking about it and I think I was a little hard on Fortnite. Not only like, is it not like, it's not that bad. It's actually really fucking good. Like, if you play this week in this season, you can unlock this and you can get this much V bucks for this much money. If he starts talking like that, someone fucking paid him off. He's gonna be singing that song. Uh, That stupid one. Yeah. Oh God. (laughs) (gasps) That thing was stuck in my head the other day. It's the worst time of my life. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to add? No. No. Good, Chris. All right. Thank you for the comment, and thank you, everybody, who commented. Type in hashtag AskTLG. AskTLG. AskTLG on your comment. Please if you'd like sober, to be. By the way. I'm 100% sober. <laughs> I mean, I got to piss pretty bad, and I've been drinking a lot of tea, but <laughs> TMI, but I don't give a fuck. Who are you talking to? Um, definitely sober. I'm going to change that, though. We'll do that after the show, though. But as always, thank you for watching. That's going to do it for this episode. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, if you enjoy this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> check us out on uh, social media and streams. Links down below. Uh, you can check out our Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all time. We're on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, other podcast platforms, if you prefer to listen to us. And we have a Patreon link down below as well, if you'd like to support the channel. Further than liking, commenting, and sharing this video, and subscribing if you're brand new. My name's Seth. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. And uh, we have... Game of the Month and Plus Club coming up, I think, next weekend. I think it's coming up soon. If it's not next, it'll be the one after. It's very it's soon. Out, yeah. So make sure to play those games. We're running out of time, and we will discuss them. But until the next episode, have a good one, guys, and take it easy.